Hello, and welcome to this overview of Roland Pro AV's V1 HD video switcher. This is a four HDMI input video switcher with overlay effects and digital audio mixing, all in a compact form factor. So let's start with some key features on the V1 HD. Easy setup, it fits anywhere. This is a compact solution for combining multiple camera and computer sources, whether in a fixed location or for quick and painless setup at a live event. As you saw, very compact form factor will fit anywhere on a production desk. Also full HD video input, so it supports 1080p video at 59.94 frames per second, giving you smooth, detailed video from compatible cameras. There's also Windows, Mac, and iPad control. So there's three options. The Windows and Mac RCS software is available uh, to download on the product page. And then if you have an iPad and an Apple Wi-Fi camera adapter, you can get the V1 HD remote app from the iPad app store. For this demo, I will be showing you the quad preview out, which also has the menu overlays. So you can press and hold tap BPM for the main setup menu. Mix and cut buttons are page up and page down, line up and line down. And to adjust the value, you just use the fader bar. The audio menu, you can just tap to open. So you can set the mix levels. So if you have microphones on cameras that you don't want to use, you can just mute that source by turning the level all the way down. And then the memory menu has the effects that will set up as well as uh, you can store and recall groups of settings with the memory presets. Switching is uh, pretty straightforward on the V1 HD. So you have an A bus and a B bus, so that's program. That's the next source queued up. And you can see there's red and green boxes on the quad preview as well. You just choose your transition type here, and then you can use the fader bar to make the transition or the transformer buttons. And so here's a dissolve here. And notice that the red and green are swapping positions. That's AB mixing the default. You can go into the setup menu and on page four, there's a AB mode. You can change it to program preset if you prefer that this red stays on the top row. When using effects with the V1 HD as split bus effects, it can generally be more convenient to have AB, but really it's just a matter of preference and your workflow. In addition for the control buttons, there is output freeze, as you can see here, or you can fade to black or fade to white using the output fade. And these are for the effects, which we'll get into in a bit. But before we do that, we're gonna talk about those inputs and outputs. Four HDMI inputs. And these are all based on the format switch all the way to the left, there's a three position switch. If you're outputting 1080p or 1080i, your sources can be 1080p and 1080i. So it will cross convert, but it will not up or down convert. So if you have it set to 720p, your sources need to be 720p resolution as well. To the left of that is the full screen program out and preview is the quad preview and menu overlay. That USB port goes to the control software. And then on the far right is RCA unbalanced line in and out. So you can bring in an external audio mixer as well as on the sides, there's a MIDI in and out and then a eighth inch microphone input with level control and headphone jack with level control. Next, what I'm gonna do is show you some of the split bus effects. So here from memory, I'm gonna set these up as A, I'm gonna make picture in picture and B, I'm gonna make a green chroma key. And this is to show you both of these effects. What I want to do first is I'll show you picture in picture. I have it in preview. So first what I want to do is do this. Now the effect, the picture in picture is on the A bus. So I have program set up here and then the window will be that. So when I turn on the effect, I can just use the fader bar to bring it in. And then here I can use the effect knobs to position it wherever I want. 
and there's two ways to edit its settings. So in the memory menu, there's a second page where you can adjust the cropping and position of the pip source. But if you want to change the border, that is in the setup menu. It's on page two. You can see I can bring this border size down here as well as change the color. So you have some flexibility with the picture in picture window. I'm going to take that effect out. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep the B bus for the chroma key effect. When I turn this on, the graphic source in preview will be overlaid. So there it is. But I need to remove the green using these knobs here. Once I do that, I get a nice clean key and I can bring graphics in and out. And when we say these are split bus effects, you can change the source of the other bus and do cut switching while the graphic is active. So you can have that sort of uh, independent overlay and, and do your camera cut switching there. And to turn it off, you would just fade it out and turn off the effect. Next, I'm going to talk about audio follows, part of the automation features. So what audio follows does is it basically automates your channel mutes. So if you're using HDMI audio, for instance, um, you know, you only want the camera mics to be active when that input is selected as program, then you can enable audio follows down here. And in addition to that, on pages 11 and 12, there's for the RCA input, if you want that to correspond to a particular cross point, and when we say cross points, we mean these four input selects. So cross point one, two, three, four as columns. You can map that to a particular input as well as with the eighth inch mic input on the side. And then also there is automation feature to auto scan so you can automatically have it cycle through the various inputs so you can see you can sort of set up auto switching and set the length of time for each source uh, in that effect and you can also adjust the individual inputs right there if you don't want a particular source in there you can just turn it off because you obviously don't want that green graphic to be in the rotation. So that's another one of the automation features for the V1 HD. And next what I wanna do is show you the RCS software. Here we have the RCS software for Windows and it is connected and synchronized. I'm gonna bring back up program so you can see right here that I can control the switcher using a mouse. This is also very similar to the layout for the iPad version. Some nice advantages to this is you have quick access to menu settings and all the system settings as well are accessible here. As well as you can have quick access to audio settings for the various audio inputs if you want to adjust the EQ for the uh, HDMI sources and the line input. So you have all of those settings easily accessible so you don't have to use the on-screen menu during production. So it can be a good control companion for the V1 HD. That pretty much covers the V1 HD. I just wanted to uh, go back and review some uh, key points again. An easy setup fits anywhere. This is a compact solution for combining cameras and computer sources in a fixed location or at a live event. You saw the footprint on the table. Full HD video inputs, 1080p 5994 video, so smooth and detailed video from compatible cameras. And then the software control, easy access to your menu settings and additional point of control for Windows, Mac, and iPad iOS. That concludes this overview on the V1 HD. And for additional support, visit Roland.com slash backstage. Thanks for watching.